So let's take on some J6 updates regarding some of the dregs of Trump world. Steve Bannon, Roger Stone, and Alex Jones. Because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So let's take on some January 6th investigative updates. Remember how yesterday we talked about the fact that Steve Bannon was trying to take all of the discovery that had been given to him in his criminal case and just throw it all out into the public square in his efforts to have the case tried in the court of public opinion rather than in a court of law and to just generally turn the proceedings into a circus. Remember the headline that we discussed from yesterday about that? Stephen K. Bannon files motion to request all documents in court case be made public. Well, now, predictably, the United States Attorney for the District of Columbia, Matt Graves, a former colleague of mine, has pushed back. Here's today's reporting by CNN. DOJ moves to limit Bannon Media Circus over January 6th investigation. And that article begins, Prosecutors have accused former President Donald Trump's ex-advisor, Steve Bannon, of attempting to try his criminal case through the media instead of in court and have asked a judge to limit what Bannon can release publicly throughout the case, according to a new filing in D.C. District Court. And let's read directly from today's court filing in Bannon's case. Caption, United States of America versus Stephen K. Bannon, defendant. Kind of has a ring to it. Reply to defendant's opposition to motion for a protective order. Defendant Stephen K. Bannon's opposition to the protective order is misleading. It makes erroneous claims about the discovery the government provided and the limited subset designated as sensitive. It levies exaggerated assertions about the standard protective order's impact on his fair trial rights, and it opposes the order wholesale with no justification. Moreover, had the defense responded to the government's efforts to confer regarding a protective order, as the defense suggested to the court it would at the November 18 status conference. It's nice that they're telling the court that the judge had also been misled. The government would have agreed to a clarified order expressly excluding any public source records and records that the defendant possesses through independent means. The defense's misleading claims failure to confer, unexplained wholesale opposition, and extrajudicial statements, yeah, that would be statements made outside of court, like when Steve Bannon on the courthouse steps said he's going to use this case to bring down the Biden administration, yeah, those extrajudicial statements, make clear the defense's real purpose to abuse criminal discovery to try this case in the media rather than in court. To safeguard witness privacy and the integrity of these proceedings, the court should reject the defendant's opposition and enter the attached clarified protective order. Now, what was left unsaid by the prosecutors, appropriately so, is that Steve Bannon also wants to throw all this stuff into the public square as a vehicle to fundraise, to grift, to steal from Donald Trump's base, just as he did with the bogus We Build the Wall Foundation. Well, I predict the judge will deny Bannon's request and will sign the protective order proposed by the prosecutors. So let's take on one more quick J6 update because it looks like the first two witnesses are preparing to plead the fifth, invoke their Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination, and those witnesses would be 
Roger Stone and Alex Jones. Here's how Newsweek is reporting that story. Headline, Roger Stone, Alex Jones say they'll likely plead the fifth in response to January 6 subpoenas. And that article begins, Roger Stone and Alex Jones have said they'll probably plead the fifth after being subpoenaed by the House panel investigating the U.S. Capitol riot regarding Roger Stone. Stone, a longtime Republican consultant and former advisor to Donald Trump, said he's not worried about the request because he doesn't know anything about the Capitol riot. But Stone then said, quote, on the other hand, as one who was framed for lying to Congress, I would probably assert my Fifth Amendment right and decline to be interviewed, Stone said. Stone was convicted in 2019 of lying to Congress, obstruction, and witness tampering, and Trump later pardoned him before leaving office. And this with respect to Alex Jones. The House panel said Jones reportedly helped organize the rally at the Ellipse on January 6 that immediately preceded the attack on the Capitol, including by facilitating a donation to provide what he described as 80% of the funding. Jones, a right-wing commentator and conspiracy theorist, said in a video statement that he also plans to decline their request for testimony, saying this, they will claim I lie about something to the committee, which isn't even true. I wouldn't lie. Then they will have the FBI and the Justice Department indict me for lying to Congress. I'm not stupid, Jones said. I'm just going to leave that last line there. Now, they will invoke their Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. Why? because if they testified truthfully, they would incriminate themselves, not to mention they would incriminate others. And at that point, immunity will be in the mix. And there are upsides to granting a witness immunity. There are downsides to granting a witness immunity. And I'm going to tackle that in a future video. But let me just tease it with this. Keep an eye out for something that we refer to as pocket immunity. Not to be confused with a pocket pardon. Pocket immunity is something that I obtained and was prepared to deliver to a witness in the event he or she invoked their Fifth Amendment right against self-incrimination. And there are times when we will use pocket immunity if it's in the interests of justice. And justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.